Thank you for joining us at Hope Lutheran Church for Worship Online. We are so glad that you are here. And if you'd like to help us reach more people with the good news of Jesus Christ, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, you can support Hope by mailing in an offering to Hope at 45900 Portola Avenue in Palm Desert, California, 92260. You can also text to give by texting 84321 or you can go to hopepd.org. There you'll find all the great things that are happening right here at Hope Lutheran Church. Well, last week, Pastor Rick began a new series called The Six Essentials of Well-Being. Now, one thing that the Bible makes clear is that God cares about every part of who we are. In fact, Jesus was even asked a question that said, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? And Jesus said, You shall not put on a garment made of two different materials. Any of you wearing polyester? Uh oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. The real answer Jesus gave was, You shall love your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now, what does it mean to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? It means loving God with all that you are, your whole self, body, mind, and soul. Why? Because Jesus loves you, all parts of you, and wants you to thrive in what he has given to you to watch over. While Pastor Rick talked about spiritual well-being last week, today I want to talk about our physical well-being and why that matters to God. Now, I know what you're thinking. What does working out and eating healthy have to do with our relationship with Jesus? It's not really that at the top of my list either. In fact, this meme pretty much sums it up for me. Yeah, brown is not my, really my color, and I'll probably be wearing short sleeves. In fact, my favorite part about having a home gym is the open bar and the refrigerator with the endless snacks. But one of the earliest followers of Jesus, the Apostle Paul, understood that since all that we are matters to God, that includes our physical health. What we do with our bodies here and now matters. So in one of Paul's letters to a church in Corinth, he writes, All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. Then he addresses a familiar saying of the day, Food is meant for the stomach and stomach for the food. It's kind of like the saying, Some people eat to live, others live to eat. It came from a philosophy called Epicureanism which is a form of philosophy that advocated living in such a way as to derive the greatest amount of pleasure possible during one's lifetime. Does that box of Oreos bring you pleasure? Then go ahead and eat them. Does binge watching that show on Netflix bring you pleasure? Then binge away. But Paul understood that a life in Christ is more than that. He goes on, do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? And here's the kicker. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? You were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Now, it's important to understand how profound this would have been to Paul's original audience. The temple in Jerusalem was, by far, the most holy place in existence. It was the very dwelling place of God on earth, the place where heaven and earth literally intersected. The temple was originally built by King Solomon a thousand years before Jesus and was destroyed 400 years later when the Jews were deported to Babylon. After their return to Jerusalem, the Israelites immediately began building another temple, which was expanded by King Herod. 
It was surrounded with magnificent marble colonnades and gilded with gold. There was an outer court called the Court of the Gentiles, which was open to the Jews and Gentiles and was the center of city life. Within this was a second, smaller court enclosed by a wall, which were, there were inscriptions that said, let no man of another nation enter inside the barrier and fence around the temple. And whoever is caught will have himself to blame that his death ensues. That's how sacred and holy this temple was. From there, there was another court for the women and an inner court for only Jewish men who have fasted and ritually washed. Inside the temple, there were chambers only for the priests that had the altar of burnt offering, an altar of incense, and the seven-branched golden lampstand, and the table for the bread of presence. All the walls were covered in gold. And then, in the very center was a massive curtain which separated the holy place from the most holy place. And only the high priest could enter the most holy place once a year on the Day of Atonement to offer incense for the sins of the people. Now, devout Jews had to make three pilgrimages to the temple every year for Passover, Pentecost, and the Festival of the Tabernacles, often traveling through hundreds of miles through rough terrain and desert to get there. So needless to say, the temple was an incredibly unique, sacred, and holy place. It was the only place sacrifices could be offered. It was the only place sins could be forgiven. It was the only place one could experience God. But when Jesus went to the cross and died for our sins, all that changed. Matthew, when describing the death of Jesus, said, then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The curtain that separated God from us was torn from top to bottom. God ripped open the temple and found a new place to dwell. God found himself in a new temple, a new place to live, and a new place to continue God's work to redeem the world. And that place is in you. Because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God no longer was confined to a building. God now dwells in you. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. In the same way that Paul's original audience treated the temple in Jerusalem with reverence and awe, is the same way Paul guides us to treat our bodies. Which means how you treat your body matters. Your physical well-being is a part of your spiritual well-being. How you treat yourself reflects how you treat the dwelling place of the Almighty. And I'll be the first to admit, I don't always treat my body like a temple. Well, maybe I treat it like one of those temples in Greece, ancient and crumbling and serving no purpose. But God calls us to live as if our bodies are the very dwelling place of the living Holy Spirit, which means we must take care of ourselves. Being a follower of Jesus causes us to see ourselves and the world in a different light and to make different decisions. I know it's so much easier and tempting to get a burger from In-N-Out than it is to grill and eat a plain piece of chicken. I know it's much nicer to sleep in an extra hour than it is to go for a walk or to go to the gym. But when we fail to take care of ourselves physically, it damages us spiritually as well. Taking care of ourselves physically takes discipline. Have you ever noticed that the root word of discipline is disciple? When Jesus calls us to be his disciples, it requires discipline. Discipline in what we say, discipline in connecting with Jesus on a regular basis, and discipline in being stewards of the first gift God gave each of us, our bodies. 
Being a disciple of Jesus means taking discipline in what we eat, what we drink, and what we do to maintain our physical well-being. And here's another thing. Because of Jesus and God's Spirit being let loose in the world, your body is not the only temple of God. Every person you see today is a living temple of Jesus, regardless of their race, their gender, their height, their weight, their hair color. Each and every person is a temple of the Holy Spirit. If you looked at every person you saw as a temple of Jesus, would that change the way you treat them? Would that change the way you interact with them? Would you show them more respect? Would you care more for those who are falling apart? Would you be able to objectify them, belittle them, mistreat them? Of course not. Understanding that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit changes the way you look not only at yourself, but at others. You will never look into the eyes of someone God does not love. You will never look into the eyes of someone in whom the Holy Spirit does not dwell. To live the life of a disciple of Jesus, to live the abundant life that Jesus died for us to have, means seeing ourselves and all of God's people as his living temples. When you look into the mirror, you are looking at the very dwelling place of God. When you see the people all around you, the people that you pass on the streets or standing in line at the grocery store or even in your own family, you are in the presence of the very temple of the Holy Spirit. When we believe this, we cannot help but be called to show respect to the temple that God has given to you. To respect the temples living all around you. The same way the people of the Old Testament showed respect to the temple in Jerusalem. For they and you were bought with a price. That price was the death of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who went to the cross for you. Who defeated sin, death, and the devil for you. Therefore glorify God in your body today, tomorrow, and always. And live into the abundant life that Jesus died for you to have. Amen. And let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gifts of our bodies, the temple in which you dwell. We give you thanks for Jesus Christ that continues to live and breathe and move through each and every one of us. May we look at others as your temple this day. May we look at ourselves and take care of the temple that you have given us, all that we may glorify you in all that we do. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Thank you again for joining us at Hope Lutheran Church. Once again, if you'll like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, it helps us reach more people with that good news that Jesus is living in them, in us, in all of us, now and forever. Amen.